Dry ice, blasting or cleaning. What is it? How does it work? And is it worth it? There are a few things we're going to try and answer in this episode. So welcome to Maker, I'm Ben. And today Dave has his blue bowler up on the stands, ready to be ice blasted. Let's see how it goes. So yeah. tell me a bit about how, how this actually works. So effectively, the, the only thing you're using to power this machine is air and the ice. There's no electricity involved in it, it's purely air. The ice itself is liquid CO2, which has been compressed, and under pressure it's forced through a die, which makes the small pellets that you yeah. see. That liquid CO2, as an ice, like I said, is no moisture inside it whatsoever. So when it's fired at a surface, it just evaporates. It, it, actually, the technical term is sublimates. It explodes effectively. So if you were to leave it there, it would just go back to CO2. Yeah. But you're not, you're not actually adding to the CO2 in the air because it's all recycled. So the CO2 that's used to create that comes from harvested sources, so from, from recycled um, liquids from power plants, etc. So today we've got Luke here from Ice Cold Tools, everybody. And this is the machine that he bought with him today. Bought a couple of machines today to find out you know, which was best. Luke's background is detailing, so he's told me a lot of good things about what this machine can do for interiors, plastics. What I was really impressed about, you see this exhaust rubber here, I gave that a good hammering before. Before that was plastered in wax oil, and now it looks, it looks almost brand new. It's like it's injected its softness back into it, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's non-abrasive. So the way the process works is that when the ice hits the substrate, whatever it is you're using, it's going to freeze it. It comes out at minus 80 degrees. So as it hits it, it freezes. The second particle that comes in and hits it will blast the surface off. So whatever's on there, all the contaminants, will effectively get frozen. Okay. And then the ice expands at around 800 times. So when it expands, it then explodes off whatever's underneath it. So effectively, your rubbers will come up brand new. It's, like I said, it's, it's non-abrasive, so you can use it on you can use it on screens, you can mm -hmm. use it on carpets, you can use it on interiors, headlinings. It's brilliant on headlinings when you've got horrible fingerprints. Yeah. Um, but then, obviously, because there's zero moisture, mm -hmm. you can use it on electrics as well. So in an engine bay, for instance, you can. Yeah, I don't see anyone like say we clean that loom up. It came from a tree. Yeah, and if you've got open terminals, yeah. even live electrics. It won't affect it because there's no moisture whatsoever. Amazing. You come around here, Ben. Yeah. So earlier today, that was absolutely caked. And look inside there, it looks brand spanking new, even down to the, the zinc on the screws. It's brought that back to life. So it's a form of recycling, in our opinion. Normally, I would have taken that off and thrown it in the bin. Yeah. Spent an hour, you know, rewiring another one. But yeah, and I'd think about use that. the other methods that you would use to clean that off, if you were going to clean it up, yeah. you're going to be using chemicals, the sorts of chemicals. Yeah. You've got to think about what you're going to be using, you know, Obviously, yeah, what I've always found in plastics as well. If you use a nasty chemical, you can fade it, can't you? Then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then you've got someone sulking that the toe cover's faded. <laughs> Notice as well, it doesn't feel 
I know it's ice, but it's not like conventional ice, is it? It doesn't feel cold and wet. No, no, look no. at the floor, it's just dust. No, that's, that's, that's one of the wonderful yeah. things about it, is, is literally that your dust that you're, you're taking off is just yeah. going to fall to the ground. Yeah. There's no moisture left behind. You don't end up with wet surfaces everywhere. So you can see under here, Ben, so back to the whole like recycling thing, and, you know, being kind to our planet. Normally, if a car is heavily corroded like this was, like normally I'd have Bruno under here with a wire wheel for a good, probably a day and a half. You know, so we've used ele less electricity, we've used less manpower, which is good for my pocket, and less of everything really. And now this, I'd say a good clean up with some um, fine sandpaper and should be ready for paint. Yeah. And as you can see here, it's, it did have a hard time getting this wax off, I'm not gonna lie, but wax oil is the nastiest thing in the world to get off. Yeah, you've got to think of it like a tool as well. Yeah. You know, you've got many different tools in your your workshop and in, sure. your, in your cabinet. There are certain things that you're going to use for certain jobs and there's yeah. certain things that do have restrictions. You've got to look at it that you can utilise it in certain areas and in other places there's going to be another tool. Totally. Yeah, I was really impressed with it. Like you see in the here, it's, you can actually see where the wax oil, and as much as I regret this, you can see there where the wax oil has actually preserved the body and that is actually its original colour. So it has done what it says on the tin there, but as you can see here, this is where I disagree with wax oil. Wax oil has actually trapped water behind and you could see as we were blasting it, the wax oil was lifting off, I don't know if you can see here. I can actually pick this off. So that means water was sitting behind the wax oil and effectively creating a chamber for the water and effectively road salt to sit and sit there to rot. And you can see it worse on the back here, like behind here. It's heavily corroded. It looks like it's been the bottom of the sea. So I can see one. Release everything. Yeah. The shop is going to actually just penetrate. So, dry ice, have we been convinced? <sighs> Not yet. So, what I do like about dry ice is that it drops the dust content. Like today, I've just had, you know, a normal general mask on, a face shield and some glasses. And as you can see in here, this car has absolutely been plastered in wax oil. We hate wax oil personally, being engineers and mechanics. Wax oil gets all over your clothes, all over your arms, and it's just general a bitch to get off. Um, Normally we steam the hell out of the car, that would normally take, you know, a good day and lots of chemicals and lots of expense. So what we've done now is how to play with this machine and we've got it back to, almost back to bare. So would you believe it? Dave ended up buying an ice blast machine. Maybe he just had too much fun playing with it. I don't know, but I'm sure he's going to put it to use, whether it's just in engine bays, maybe interiors, or if it's just to get the worst off under the chassis. Either way, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of it in future episodes. So if you like this episode, 
do give it a like and hit subscribe down below. If you've got any questions or if you have experience with ice blasting, do drop a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, look forward to seeing you in the next episode.